back again. It's right. We're back. Well, we're back, as in me. I'm back. What's up? This is the Metal Hammer of Doom podcast. Happy to have you here. Uh, if you're wondering who I am, my name is Robert Cooper. I am the original author of the Hammer of Doom News Report back on 411mania.com, as well as a guy who does a few podcasts in his day. And we got a pretty cool show coming up. That's right. Uh, Mark's away. He's doing uh, doing things. He's, I think he's watching wrestling. What a nerd. Uh, he's off watching wrestling right now, so he gave me this uh, you know, open spot. And luckily, I have a partner in crime that was totally willing to take up the mantle with me of uh, reviewing this album that is absolutely one of my favorite albums of all time. It's one of those that really just hits deep down for me. It's really important. I love it so damn much. Uh, tonight, we're reviewing Woods 5, Gray Skies and Electric Light by Woods of... Woods of uh, E-Prey. Sorry, it's E-Prey. I've been mispronouncing that name for two years at this point. It's a good thing uh, my co-host, who I'm going to introduce in about five seconds, uh, sent a video that had the part of the leader of the band, David Gold, explaining uh, the name of the band. Yeah, cool. Anyways, on to my co-host for this evening. He's the man at the control stick. He's the Rattledge Broadcasting Super fan in his right. He's a podcaster who does his own comics podcast every Monday night here on the Rattledger Broadcasting Network at about, I'd say about 10 p.m. Source material. It's pretty popular. Go listen to it. Here he is. Boys, girls, ladies, gents, people of all ages. Mr. Jesse Starcher. What's up, buddy? Jesse. Jesse. Oh, uh, shit. You know, it's a really awkward, uh, huh. Yeah, is he talking? <laughs> okay, so Jesse's totally, uh, having some, some little difficulties there. I'm just just scream whenever you get here, Jesse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, technical difficulties for live, everybody. Let's see, yep. So... A little bit of dead air right now. Uh, this album here, it's really important. I don't want to get into my feelings on it too much. I kind of want to let Jesse sort of start off on things. That's kind of how we're going to go tonight because I'll tell you, and I'm sure Jesse's listening at this moment, I wrote up... I'm about ready to throw some shit at Blog Talk is about what I'm ready to do. Yeah. Dude. I tell yeah. you what, dude. Okay. I, I tried to... This happened to me... Uh, couple podcasts ago where I actually had to call in and be the, the guest on my own show because for some strange reason when I do when I call when I go in as the host mic the mic won't work uh, huh. but I ended yeah and but well I can tell you last week everything was fine so I don't know but here's the here's the shitty part about it I can't exit as the host without shutting the podcast down. So, and I now have to call in on a cell phone and do it that way. So, uh, so I'm on here twice. That's, that's a, a wonderful way to start the podcast. Robert Cooper, thanks for the wonderful introduction. I'm sorry. I, I, I was talking for probably a good, uh, I don't know, 30 seconds until I realized that nobody could hear me. Um, it is a wonderful, wonderful, absolute pr- pleasure to actually be on here and talk this album with you. I've, you know, we're, we're going to get, we're going to get, we're going to cut into, cut in deep into this album. And I know a lot of it is, uh, you know, you, you came to the, you, you shared this album with me as one of your favorites and it's, it's, uh, it's a very good album. I'm, I can't wait to have the opportunity to discuss this with you. So by all means, sir, now that I'm actually here, you can continue. <laughs> well, well, that's good. Uh, cause as I was saying, uh, the notes that I wrote up on this album are, uh, I, I, you know, I've got a word count going. It's about 2,200 words. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, yeah, that was just my notes as I was going. And actually, I probably could have done more if I would have started a little earlier. Like, yeah. I've, oh, wow. It's one of those, when I, when I say I've listened to this album like 50 times, I'm not kidding because it's just, there was a time like last year for like a month and a half, this album was just on my was on the CD player in my car because I still have one of those. Just on a loop. 
Uh, oh, yeah. Right. You know, people talk about, like, yeah, nobody remembers this struggle from the 90s, and it's a uh, CD guy go flipping through a CD booklet. No, I do that. <laughs> I, still got, I still got the CD booklet. I still have a tape oh, player nice. in my car, actually. Oh, yeah, Fair everybody enough. loves that tapes, too. Do you have, do you have the CD player to tape adapter? No, no, I do not. No, I just have a tape player, though. I need to get that adapter so I can plug up my like iPod and just blast things there. But I don't there know. You go. Well, at least you're, you're you're up with the times in that in that respect, at least. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, okay. one day I'm gonna get a new car. Maybe it'll even have a USB port in it. Oh, whoa, whoa. whoa. Let's, maybe, let's, let's maybe. Slow down. Satellite, <laughs> satellite radio. Oh, shit. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how how would handle that. I already have two NPR stations here. I don't I don't know what I could do with more. <laughs> God, that's cool. Yeah, that that's that's my uh that's my car radio. Two NPR stations, like two good one classic rock station, one kind of mixed rock station, one alternative rock station, and then the random channel. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, so yeah, it's, it, it, that, that's the fun of North Carolina radio. You'll you'll have mostly country. God, I hate country. I really hate country. But <laughs> anyway, we are not here to talk about country because, oh, no, we only talk about metal on this podcast unless it's in a few weeks where we're doing NWA. That's going to be weird. Yes, it will. <laughs> I mean, I'll do it. I'm all for it. That's weird. But anyways, uh, so yeah, I, I said I'd try and keep the introductions a little short because we got 11 songs to get through and a lot to talk about. At least I know I have a lot to talk about. So uh, I guess I'll go ahead and ask you. I know you're very new to Woods of, Woods of E-Prey, but uh, what do you think of them so far? Any, any memories, any love of them? I absolutely love these guys. Uh, this album, at least, you know, I understand they evolved from black metal to more of a doomy side. Is that right? Yeah. Ooh, ooh, that was loud thunder. Scared my little baby kitten. So, uh, yeah, they started out as very much a black metal band, and as each album went on, they got doomier and doomier until you get this last album, which is like 70-30 doomed black metal, which I feel like that's their. this is their best album, like... By a lot, but I don't think they have a bad song. They're one of those bands for me. Mm-hmm. Well, they clearly this feels more like a this feels like a doom album. And when you first told me that, uh, when you first described doom to me, the doom metal, um, I had some of the bands you had mentioned in the past. I had immediately heard of, and I was like, oh yeah, okay. So that 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 kind of fits. Fits it, but Doom. Your best description of Doom would uh, metal would be something that I don't know where that they they sing about death. Is that usually the the premise or the the main subject of Doom metal? Is that is that kind of where where they usually tend to lean towards? Uh, it's kind of it varies. There are some bands that really focus on death uh, a lot of candle masses uh early stuff they kind of they talked about they're one of those they're pretty much like one of the original doom metal bands they did a lot of stuff they do some stuff on uh death and actually when messiah mark colin uh, joined the band they did a lot of stuff actually involving more christian beliefs and stuff it was really interesting but doom is really about it's a lot about there's a lot of stuff on death and stuff like woods here they are kind of rare because they actually talk about life like actual living and yeah. you know dying but there's a lot of stuff about death there's usually stuff about you know magic and wizards and stuff like that like Candlemass's first album has a song called the uh the sorcerer's pledge which is a uh like an 11 minute awesome song about a we're like a wizard it's actually merlin that drinks the blood of virgins to keep re- re- rebirthing himself until he becomes powerful enough to keep, defeat the mighty evil like yeah okay. a lot of doom well, yeah, a lot of them like stuff about death. There's a lot of uh, stuff that's more like more closer to like traditional heavy metal stuff, like wizards and all that stuff. There's stuff that kind of goes along the lines of a 
you know, maybe it's something a little more like the stoner metal bands do. There's there's some bands that do. I was loud thunder. Sorry. There was a there's, there's some stuff that do songs that are more about, uh, I guess, kind of like ha- having some fun kicking back. But those are more like the stoner doom bands. The yeah, doom metal yeah. itself, it very much the themes fit the sound of the music. It's very ominous. It's dark. Oftentimes, it really uh, really can hit you hit you down deep, or at least makes you think about. The afterlife, or say, or the well, bad say. More, you know, for the doom metal that I'm more privy to is probably more along the lines of the doom stoner stuff that you're talking about. Because this particular, uh, this particular album and this band, I mean, just like you said, this was probably one of the first bands that I ever really listened to that spoke more to me about, you know, spirituality and death. So. Uh, that's that's kind of what when I first heard this album uh, and you first suggested it, I was like, man, these guys. If there's a doom metal band that I've ever heard of, this is the doom metal band that I've heard. Um, and granted, they're they're not. You know, we say metal when we get into some of the tracks here. There's a lot of piano. Mm-hmm. That it, it, it that is definitely prevalent in the uh, in this music. It's not. It's not. It doesn't take the center stage on maybe a couple songs that may, but it's not you know center stage. Like it's not like the band built around the piano or anything like that. But again, it's it's a um, you know I I enjoy it for as as doomy as it may be and as as uh, the most doom I've ever heard. It was probably it really stunned me at how much I actually liked this this group and this album. So. There's 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 my two cents on what I thought of of you when you first introduced me to. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's funny. I talked about doing that whole time, and I'm like, oh yeah, Sabbath. So really, Black Sabbath. <laughs> Think about what they do. That's doom metal. I mean, they're they're proto doom metal. They're really more of the traditional sort of heavy metal. But some of their later stuff gets to kind of doom territory, especially if you listen to the, you know the song Black Sabbath. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's doom metal right there. <laughs> Mm-hmm. The heavy riff, the slow tempo, talking about, you know, end of the world. That's Doom right there. But, yeah, uh, I think we we actually haven't reviewed much Doom on here because Mar- that's like Mark's least favorite metal genre, I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he doesn't like slow, which I can understand. You know, there's even times where I'm like, eh, okay, I want something fast. But uh, I think with the last, no, I don't think we've done anything besides like maybe Black Sabbath. And you remember how that went over. Good thing exactly. I brought Sean Garmer. If I didn't bring Sean Garmer with me, I would have been screwed. Because Mark's like, yeah, after track four, I gave up on it. Oh, but, uh, that was, I still love to write him about that. But yeah, actually, my uh, my history with the band is kind of interesting because before I started uh, writing the column I did, I wrote it, I started writing it in June of uh, 2012. I was like, okay. But I at least want to get familiar with all the bands. This was like January of that year. I want to get familiar with all the band, all every single album that was released last year. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't last long. <laughs> no, I, uh, I, 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 that's a pretty big. Uh, that's yeah, a I lot had, of uh, stuff put on your plate. I, I'd gotten a few albums in, and I said, okay, well, maybe I should just start on 2012. Oh, well, that didn't start until like March of that year. So. I was just went to the 2012 and heavy metal page and I looked at, okay, all the albums are released. I'd listen to one song from each and tried to categorize them as, Ooh, I want to listen to all this album. Well, I didn't get that far into that either. <laughs> <laughs> but I did get a pretty good, I got a really interesting starting point because, uh, I remember I listened to Alcest, their, uh, album from that year. And that was different. That's, uh, they pl- they play black metal to a degree, but they've kind of skewed more to an ambient sound. So there's something uh-huh. I can send people when they want to like kick back and they don't know they're listening to metal. It's great. Uh, but I listened to some of that and then I stumbled upon what do you pray for? You pray. Damn it. Oh, dude, I'll be doing it all night. I'll be doing it all night. I guarantee it. Oh yeah, it's it's E-Pray. and I can't believe it took you it took me like all the, like two years and one video for me to realize I've been doing it wrong. <laughs> but yeah, what do we pray? Because it's in a language I don't know. Because I'm a filthy American. Gaijin. <laughs> it's not in Japanese now. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
But uh, I had been, uh, I'd stumbled upon these guys. And the first song off this album, Lightning and Snow, I heard it. And I'm like, all right, I, I can do this. And then as I listened to more and more of the album, I honestly didn't get into the uh, doomier songs then. I was into some of the heavier songs like Adore Vivos and uh, yeah. Kiss My Ashes Goodbye and songs like that, you know, the heavier songs. I'm like, oh, you know, this is a, I still thought it was a really good album. And Lightning and Snow kept getting stuck in my head, and I eventually put it on my iPod and, like, growl along with it while I was walking on, cam- on community college campus because that's a great thing to do. And I finally was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to go buy this album. And I bought that album. <laughs> And I spun it, you know, five, ten times, loved it. Then I went and bought Woods 4 and spun that five, ten times. And Woods 4 is a good album. I feel like there's a bit of predictability in that album. That makes it sure it's not as good in this album. Plus it's about 15 15 tracks long, so a little long in the truth, but it's still a really good album. Sorry. That's That's my mic. I actually got my mic to work. I apologize. Oh. Okay, I was like, Jesus Christ. Okay. But yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, Woods 4 was a great album, and then I I started listening to all their other stuff, and it kind of just kind of spiraled into an obsession for me. Like, I started getting into the, like, I started looking deeper into the band, and I just kind of found myself falling in love with a lot of the ideology that's involved in it, or at least a lot of the thinking that comes from the ideology, you know, songs like Finality and Traveling Alone, mm-hmm. and... Even a song like Silver, which is much more reminiscent of some of the earlier songs, like uh, Shards of Love. Shards of Love is the first track off of uh, Woods 4, and it tells the story of a husband, of a wife leaving the husband, and he's trying to tell her about all the good times she's had, and then then she starts talking about all the bad times. Like, that's the song. Like, it's just their back and forth. It's their back and forth. And while you don't, it doesn't go into anything deep, you, you feel like. Either you know that, been in that situation, you know that situation, or you just you just kind of feel like the emotions coming off of it. And I feel like that's like a song like Silver. When we get to that, really does a good job of making you making you care about what they're talking about. You know, getting mm-hmm. getting real deep in. And I feel like that's what this band does a really good job. No matter what they're talking about, there's always some sort of introspection into a person, as well as kind of an outer perspective on the world at large that this band brings that not many others do that I feel. You know, you don't find many uh, bands talking about the lack of an afterlife. I s- not that's right. <laughs> yeah. 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 At least thinking, and thinking about that concept and just being like, yeah, there's no Jesus. This, um, just- I was going to say, you're right. The, the, the concepts in here now i know we're going to get into some of this stuff so i don't want to i don't want to spoil a whole lot of it but you know i'm going to go ahead and put this out here right out in front of you know of, uh, right before we get into these songs um i consider myself a christian so listening to something like this uh you know immediately i'm not like you know i, I definitely am not uh i was taken aback at first just because not that I had judged this guy or anything like that, but um, it's tough to bring yourself to listen to something that not doesn't go completely against your beliefs, but it, you know, it's, it's definitely agree. sung by, yeah, it's definitely sung by somebody that, you know, has a totally different view than I do. Um, yeah. Uh, especially about the afterlife. You mentioned that, uh, you know, there are some, there are some songs on here. And one of my favorite songs on this album is specifically about, um, a, a non-believer talking to a believer. Uh, so we'll, we'll definitely talk about that. I wanted to ask you though, before we go any further, I don't know if you mentioned this yet or not, but did you say that, um, Woods five was your, f- the first uh, the first album you had the opportunity to listen to by these guys, or was it prior to? No, it was the first one. I, went, I pretty much went backwards. I went five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, I got you. Yeah. It, it, yeah did, did, then, were they definitely more black metal back in back on their first album? No, they were. They were a black metal band, pretty much. Like, they? they had okay. some doom in there, but they were definitely like like David Gold didn't even do the vocals on that album. Like he just played drums, and I think he did backing vocals. But they had another guy doing lead vocals. But it, okay. you know, he did a good job. And uh, 
I think one thing here on Woods 5 that's really important is I really like the instrumentation and the doom style that's brought in here. Uh, actually, the backing band, because one thing that I've noticed about Woods is that they, uh, they, they kind of change members every album. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I don't know if that, that's David Gold. I don't know how he was like to work with, or maybe he just wanted to keep things fresh. But uh, this time, actually, he's got uh, well, the guys and girl of uh, Thross and Blood, which are a, a Canadian like folk black metal band that he played drums for on on their EP. He brought them in for his backing band, and I feel like they do a really good job of kind of bringing in some of their own talents to it. This this album definitely has a lot more of a. Uh, I feel like it has more focus on the guitar and the production elements a little better than the last album, even though Woods 4 is a great album. I love it. But mm-hmm. I feel like this one's made just that much better by the presence of, you know, the, the guys and the girl drummer of Thrust and Blood. That's got to be pretty tough, you know, switching up every album. Um, you, you know, you get, I, I would imagine a band gets a groove and you would. Unless you really didn't like that groove, you know, uh, or somebody was a real shithead in the lineup, um, it, it's got to be tough to, like, turn around and say, okay, see you guys later. Now I'm going to start with another. Now I'm bringing in some other people. I, I didn't look up on the, too much on the band's history, but uh, that, uh, that's got to be pretty challenging, I would figure, when it comes to production and coming up with songs and lyrics and, and turn around and, yeah. you know, Oh, Listen. Well, it's like uh, like David Gold. He's pretty much he was the band. Like okay. He played. I think he played bass, uh, backing guitar. I want to say he did drums too. Let me make sure. But he would, he wrote all the lyrics, did the vocals, he did the drums. Like he could pretty much do everything. Mm-hmm. Except for I don't think he played lead lead guitar very much. But uh, no, he was the band. Kind of like with Death. I remember when I did that retrospective. Like every year, every time Death changed their album. Uh, changed their lineup too and i think it really made each album kind of feel like its own experience something different and i yeah. really i really like that i feel like it works it works really well yeah let's see uh, david gold played drums guitars and vocals i don't think he ever played bass but yeah he can pretty okay. much do almost everything so he was like he, he he was the band so the fact that they switched people every time i feel like it was held it was held together by by David David Gold and he kind of made it to where they still had that same core going on. It's just each time they would kind of change a little. Okay, I got you. I got you. Well, yeah. I, I dabbled a little bit into four. It's four. I haven't really. That was one of that was one of the ones you put on the essentials for me. <clears throat> Robert Cooper does have an essentials playlist. He was he was kind enough to send me on Spotify. Uh, so if anybody else is interested out there, I don't know if you made it a public playlist or not, but uh, you can hop on Spotify and give it a listen because uh, he mentioned that a couple podcasts ago when me and him were on here. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know, have at it, man. What what else you got to say here before we get into the first tune? Um, uh, I think we can go ahead and uh, we can go ahead and intro the intro the first song on there because uh, you know we've said we've said plenty about the history of the band and you know kind of our feelings on it. And I think I think we should start letting the music speak for itself, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, all right, all right. Here, here we go. First track here uh, off of Woods Five is called uh, "Lightning and Snow." <laughs>
Manual fade. Yeah. That came across really. That actually came across really snowy this time. I don't know why. That was weird. Oh, I, it, it, you hear blog talk, man. That's about all I can say because I. I playing clips on other stuff dude it'll sound awesome on the podcast when you re-listen to this man it'll sound it'll sound great i don't know if you had the opportunity to listen to any of you guys's newest stuff but anytime you guys play music it sounds that that whole hi-fi thing that they're saying over there straight up it sounds like you're playing it off of your mp3 player um Mm -hmm. but uh but i could tell you uh anyway first song lightning and snow Uh, now i'm you're let me just go ahead and preface this with, I would love for you to take the lead after each one of these songs, because I know you have given it some thought, but if you want me to say anything first, let me know. Yeah. I kind of planned on like letting you start. Okay. I feel like if I go on my entire like minutes long spiel, I'll already cover things you could have said. So I want you to go ahead and say <laughs> what you have to say. And I can play right. of that, including the stuff I already have. Well, let me go ahead. Let me go ahead and do. Uh, let me go ahead and say that this was the first song that I got to listen to off of this album that you suggested to me. Okay, um, vocally, when it comes to music, um, especially metal, any type of any type of hard rock or whatever, what's going to nail a song for me is going to be vocals, and. If you have the type of vocals that this song starts out with throughout the whole album, it's going to be tough for me personally to enjoy it. That's just my personal preference. I know there's other people out there that enjoy the screaming and, and, and things like that. But when he gets to where he actually starts you know, singing in that deep baritone voice of his that he has... Um, I'm hooked. Uh, so vocally, the change up that he does, we see that a lot throughout this album um, where they have the little bit of the l- l- little bit of sc- screaming going on there. But when he actually starts to sing, he brings it right back down uh, to a, a level that I definitely, I loved it. I loved it. I was like, okay, these guys have got my attention. Um, now as for the song itself, I've, put some thought at lyrically i know me and you we're we're lyrical guys we 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 enjoy the story uh especially uh that that a great songwriter can get across um a great message uh if they've got a great message in the song we're we're all about it um i'm i'll give you my impression of this i'm looking at the lyrics right now but my impression uh, my initial impression of the song uh it it definitely sounds like he is it's the, the, okay. I'll tell you what the, the lyrics that stand out to me is where he says, I only had one life to live and life said, no. Um, it, it sounds like it, it sounds like he's at a war within either himself or with some other force uh, that he feels is against him. Just my take on things. Now let me, let, let's talk about the title of the song real quick. Let me get, I'll, and then I'll let you talk here, Coop. Um, Lightning and snow. There isn't, I, I'm a big weather buff. Coop, you, you, you enjoy watching the Weather Channel? Uh, no, I'm not 80. <laughs> Dude, you can't tell me you have not seen the viral videos of Jim Cantori sitting outside oh, yeah. in a snowstorm when a freaking lightning crash hits. Um, I had the thunder snow. There you go. That's right. And, and Jim Cantori is about laying on the ground in awe, in the shock and awe. So, suppose, you know, he's on the ground. He's amazed. Lightning and snow, when you pair those two together it's a very rare occurrence i think i've only seen it like once or twice in my entire life and and, uh it's a it's a very rare thing to happen um now i don't know if that's what they were trying to get across here if that has some way of of figuring into it uh but you know i I thought that was a neat uh a neat way to kind of open it up with a song called lightning and snow it's very rare it's Snow's beautiful. It, it, I, I'm a big fan of the snow. I know you're a little bit more south in the uh, United States region than I am, 
but I'm a big fan of the snow. Uh, as soon as I start seeing it falling, as long as I don't have to drive it, I, I'm good. It could be up to four feet of snow and I'm good. But uh, if you start seeing lightning, lightning is only going usually to occur when there is a badass snowstorm hitting. And uh, so I don't know if that has any, if that can tie into the song at all. But uh, there's my take on it, Coop. What, what do you guys say, dude? Well, actually, uh, funny thing. There's a, a website called songmeetings.com, I think, and it posts the lyrics, like, you know, all those lyrics I do, sides do, but then it has people try and kind of interpret the meaning of the song. And granted, for metal bands, it's a little harder because uh, the traffic's not quite there like it would be for other bands. But, uh, sure. yeah, yeah, that's kind of the thing about it. But I was reading that, and... The person who commented, I forget their name, which uh, just dick move. I'm supposed to be able to give uh, <laughs> give credit to people. This can't this can't be a scholarly podcast now because I didn't cite my sources. I am a horrible person. But uh, uh, what that person said was uh, that the lightning that it talks about is like his life flashing right before his eyes, and how he's looking back at his life and he's seeing how beautiful it was. And he wants to go back, and he asks life, and life says no. And I was like, okay. Kind of ruins what I was going for, but it fits more with the theme of the album, which when we get towards the end of the album, I can, I'll can start like linking things back like a fucking Tarantino movie. But, All right, uh, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a Reservoir Dogs say, up in this piece. Say what again? But <laughs> what I was thinking was Lightning and Snow... I don't know. I know lightning's what they call amphetamine. And snow's what they call cocaine. I thought maybe this was a slight kind of like whoa from somebody who was a drug addict. I don't. I don't think David. No, David Gold was probably never a drug addict. He seems like a really kind of sound of mind, straight up dude. I don't know. I was kind of looking at it like that because this is the one song on the album, even though it's probably one of my favorites, if not my favorite. It's mm-hmm. the one that I've had like the most trouble kind of figuring out what is this about? Because it doesn't, it never specifies really what it's saying. But, uh, you know, I thought when I was talking about the moment of silence, I was wondering if maybe that was him saying goodbye to Ina's old self and being numb to the world and that the drowning in the years of sorrow was maybe like, I don't know, falling into a depression or some sort of drug abuse. Uh, Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oof. Damn it, cat! My cat just bit my leg, little bastard. Which one? Uh, uh, I got a new one actually. We named him. I, I wanted to name him uh, Pancake Mix because me and my friends <laughs> had a uh, we had a running joke going that my mom names our cats after random things around the house. So we named it Pancake Mix, and my mom refused. So after uh-huh. refusing five other names, I finally named him Black Tiger after. Uh, Tiger Mask. You remember Tiger Mask from from Japanese wrestling? Black, uh, Black Tiger you, was his arch nemesis. Okay, what was that? The arch nemesis? Yeah, Tiger, Black Tiger was his arch nemesis because she wouldn't let him name Tiger Mask because she because she's like Tiger sounds stupid. I'm like, well, Black Tiger. And actually, Eddie Guerrero, I think, was one of the Black was one of the versions of Black Tiger. So there's a little wrestling trivia for you. I'll remember that. Yeah, because he's a, he's a he's a black long haired tabby. So. Black Tiger. It's so funny. But, I'm not going to have the opportunity to, to uh, I'm going to just take one minute here and I'm going to tell you the cat I had I, back when I was a, uh, you know, a kid back in the, when I was 15 or so we had cats and coming up with names for pets was always fun with, for me. And uh, I, I just want to go ahead and give you, I'll give you two names. Okay. Of the cats that we had. Now we had more cats, but we, there's two of them that always stuck out to me. All right. We called one cabbage. Okay. All right. Now, the only the the only reason we decided to call this cat cabbage was because at about that time when I was in school, there was a, a thing going around school stating that if you were getting ready to sneeze, if you said the word cabbage, you wouldn't sneeze. Well, this cat sneezed all the time. So we called it cabbage. Um and we had our second the the other the other cat that uh, 
uh, I want to talk about here was a cat we decided to call Moan Key, uh, which was short for Come On Kitty. So we called him Moan Key. <laughs> Moan Key. God. Moan All right. I, I, <laughs> I derailed. I Remember derailed like a the podcast. Friend of mine from from Civil War enacting. Her name is Cat Shed. And I called that no. dog. Would you find him in Shed? So now I can't call him Shithead in public. <laughs> I was like, nice. oh, Stinky, because his name was Stinky, even though his name was Ralph. But he's like, my uncle called me Stinky. That's what I'm sticking with. But, Staying yeah, with from drug from possible drug addiction to cats. Because <laughs> I was thinking. <laughs> Because I thought when it was saying life said no, I was like, maybe that was uh, maybe that was some way of saying, like, you couldn't live the life the way they wanted. And, you know, the loss of love it talked about was uh, just feeling empty and how it would, everything would be with them all the time it would just be like the inescapable effects of drug abuse. But that being said, I think the other interpretation fits the album much more. <laughs> I was like, what? Well, because I read it, and I'm like, that's probably right. But I'm like, but I already got this in my head. I've already been working on this theory all day. So, damn it, I'm going to do it. <laughs> well, I like it. You know, one of the things that I learned doing the um, the comic book podcast, the one source material, uh, Benjamin J. Cologne has taught me when we did, uh, oh, shoot, uh, The Killing Joke. When we talked The Killing Joke. One oh, of the, one the of ending of The Killing Jokes. Yeah, the ending. Oh. Well, one of the things that we, one of the things that I took out of that was, and and Ben kind of, Ben showed me uh, by talking me through it a little bit after the podcast. You know, Alan Moore had a great way of writing a story that you could take any way you wanted, uh, and that was, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but what he uh, you know what you could the purpose of an artist is to write something and art uh is for you to interpret granted they may have a meaning there but you know what you're thinking and you'll see this in a couple of the songs that i like what you, what you are thinking has that's the meaning man that's that's the only thing that matters is what it means to you um mm -hmm. so uh, if you gained anything from the way your theory uh granted it may not be what he wrote it for or what he wrote it specifically about but you know he, his intention most likely was so that people could get out there and enjoy the song and actually um uh, have it s mean something special for them so i think uh i think you're on the right track there man yeah i, I mean it's that's, that's what art really is which when we eventually do that comics review of Vinland Saga, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm caught up on that, and there's a lot of large themes to be found in that. Like you know, there, there's a lot of stuff like this, like this album, to where I look you look at it and can do, to where you can you can talk about it because there's a lot of there's a lot of like gray kind of shades and aspects to things, and a lot of large themes to talk about that. A lot of, you know, book a lot of content comic books and music, they don't necessarily get into things like good and necessarily, there's not necessarily a good and evil sort of aspect to things. There's not a talk of the afterlife in any sort of way other than either A, it's paved with gold, or B, there is none. But it never gets into any ramifications of it. Mm hmm Okay. Interesting. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I think that I think that's all for the first track. Like that was that's kind of like the one really iffy track that I'm have on this album. Now we're gonna get into the really fun stuff because you know we're talking about death this whole time. I think that is perfect because now we're going to get into track number two, which is called "Death Is Not an Exit." Yeah. 
All right. <clears throat> you know, it sucks not it sucks not actually being able to listen to the whole song. <laughs> Because I really, yeah. I enjoy some of these songs so much that, you know, you're, there's, there's parts of it, you know, that happen at the end that I think are really important. Um, uh, so you want me, you want me to go ahead and take the lead again? Yeah, I, I think that'll be just good. We'll do that for all the songs. All right. Sounds good. Um, well, clearly to me, this, this is a, this is a, actually a very positive song. In, in my opinion, um, death is not an exit. We're, what I feel that he's trying to get across in this song um, pretty clearly is that you, you are to, and this is a prevalent theme in my eyes throughout this album, is to it, enjoy the life that you're in. If there's one thing that is... Uh, one thing that is absolutely certain, whether you're, you know, whatever faith you are, you are living right now. And his take on that is that, you know, it, you know, it, it, there's parts in here where he says, respect the body for it is all you really are. Now, he believes that is it. You are, you are what you are right now. Take care of yourself. And, um, you know, take care of those around you. Um, now he's clearly on the nose with what he believes in this song, uh, especially when he says earth is a spiritual place, but there is nothing after this. And that interview I sent you to, or I, I sent you, I don't know if you had the opportunity to watch it all, but you know, at the beginning he, he gets that right out up front is that he is, you know, they don't, they don't believe in an afterlife. And this was the same thing here in this particular song. Um, now, death is not an exit. I, and you know how it, it's interesting how he says death is not the flick of the switch. And then at the end of the song, this is the part I'm talking about where I, I kind of wish we could play the end uh, where, mm -hmm. you know, he says death is not a flick. And then all of a sudden you hear a, a switch actually flick and the song ends. And I, I really enjoyed that. Now, the bleak life in modern times, this is going to be a theme we also see throughout this album where he's in how it fits into this album. I don't know if it's if his statement is that we live in such a age that to him, it is depressing. Um, you know, he most of what we hear on this, it feels like he is depressed in the, in the life that he lives, uh, or he's not happy with the way that he lives, he lives his life. Um, but, uh, there you go. That's, uh, that's my take on it, man. Mm. See, I like that you have a nice and positive outlook on these things. The mine is very not is it dark. I mean, uh -oh. it, it, it is dark. Oh yes. Yeah. Um, uh, like I put like the reason why it's a bleak life and there's modern times is that we have a really unmagical society. Like there's it's so bleak, it's gray, no shadows anymore, nothing hiding anything magical, no color. It's just all steel and concrete and just moving along like you know, like a little cog in the machine, just going to and from your place of business and your home with your family and then you die. Um, mm -hmm. with the thing about, uh, you know, like your body, it's all you really, it's all you really are. That's all you have. That's, but it's you, it's yours. You need to respect it. You need to love it because that's the only thing keeping you on this earth. There is, you know, going from his mindset, which, you know, I love me some Jesus too. Not going to lie. This kind of, this kind of hits me at the, uh, you know, the time in college where you're like, what am I doing? Who am I? You know, it really hits you in that existential period of life, at least with me. Mm -hmm. So I've been like, I've really absorbed like a lot of this album and kind of used it to, uh, I guess, been a benefit in, with my worldview, benefit my worldview, you know, looking at things differently, which has actually gotten me in trouble in a lot of classes. <laughs> I once had a, uh, I once had a classmate go, are you an atheist? I'm like, no. Like, why do you argue every time we bring up religion? I'm like, because everybody else agrees with you in this classroom and I need to bring something else out here. Yeah. And, uh, it, it, she's like, huh? 
I, I totally feel you on the whole, you know, being in college. Uh, well, you know, that that period of time where you're you're questioning and I'm not going to say that it stops there because, you know, the uh, personally for me, you know, when I started getting when I started having kids, um, you start thinking about it again. You know, you a lot of times whether you go to church a whole lot or not, you know, it once you start having kids then you start realizing okay should i start bring should i start becoming more religious uh you know things things along that area so if you yeah, it's so tough it's to no have an about, go ahead it's, it's no longer about it's no longer about you necessarily it's about you exactly. and others that you have a lot of influence on and you like exactly. you know let's say there you know let's say if there is an afterlife you know well, shit, you know, I don't want them to miss out on it because I did something wrong as a parent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, Again, it, it, you start, you start worrying about, yeah, just like you said, you start worrying about others. Now, I don't know. It did, did this, uh, it was David, David's his name, right? Yeah, David Gold. Any idea if he had kids at all? I don't think he did, did he? I don't think he did. Now he was pretty. He's pretty young. I think he was only about thirty-one, maybe. Okay. Yeah, he died in a car wreck. So. Yeah, we were. Yeah, uh, I know that he had passed away, and it was shortly before this album, right? I yeah, mean, shortly was, before the album released, I should say, not before he actually created, because that would have been fucking awesome. Uh, hey, I'm gonna sing. A, I'm gonna. <laughs> I want to make a CD about there's no afterlife, and I died a while back. I shouldn't be laughing about that. That's yeah. horrible. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, it, it's he he passed away prior to the album getting released, right? Like a mo like a month before. Wow, dude, that's crazy. Yeah. And and it's it's these particular songs. I think also, you know, this album speaks to me a lot because of that just that talking about that alone about what happened to this guy and this you know this body of work coming out shortly after that you know he he now has his answer as to whether there is or is one or not um which but again you know you believe you're you're setting a certain belief set um Tell me what you, I mean, death is not an exit. What is, what are they saying here? Is he trying to say that there, it's not a way to get out of the horrible life you're in? Why would you use death as an exit? Uh, is it anti-suicide? Well, he actually has an anti-suicide song. It's a two-parter off of uh, Woods 3, Deepest, uh, Deepest Roots, Darkest Blues, which is actually, that's, that's what the whole song is a. Uh, that's the title track. That two-part title track is actually the anti-suicide song, really. But, oh, wow. Uh, I'm, actually, I'm actually getting there. I have a few more sentences. Because it was talking about how it's, Earth is a very spiritual place. I put it, uh, there's a lot of different religions and deities that populate the minds of everybody. But, you know, following this logic, after we're gone, just like the times before we were here as people, the gods, the deities, they'll be gone. They're, they're not going to be here anymore, just like us. And it's we're really small in the timeline of the universe, which actually is something uh, – I want to watch Birdman. I don't know if you uh, have seen that yet. I've heard a but lot about a, it. I think I've, I think I've seen <laughs> – I'm spoiled. I know that I know that much. I know pretty much what happens in the movie, but I've heard it's a great movie. Yeah. yeah. There's a scene where Emma Stone's character, the daughter of uh, the main character, of Michael Keaton's character, she's – you know, using a pen and marking all the pieces of uh, all the dots on the, to on the roll of toilet paper. And that one square is how long we have been around. Uh, the human race has been around in in the universe. And I feel like uh, it kind of it's talking about partially like how small we are and how insignificant us as a human race are is in the, like the grand scheme of the universe. And it's not really long. But once you die, like, there's no door to the afterlife. There's no magic escalator. There's no walk into the bright light. There's no golden gates. There's no St. Peter. Just blackness. Like, you die. That's it. And that's it. Nothing. Yeah. And actually, the ending click, which was really interesting. Uh, I know it's supposed to be the flick of the switch that I was talking about. You know, death is a flick of the switch. 
every time I listen to it, actually, I hear it as a as a trigger on a gun being pulled. Because I know, I know he's had some very he's anti suicide songs. I know he doesn't believe in it, but I know thinking about how talking about the bleak life and how modern times are so bleak. I was always hear that not as the switch being pulled in the song ending, but as the switch being pulled in someone's life ending. But yeah. That's how I see it. Like they're done, and that's like I don't know if uh, that's just my interpretation. That's what I always hear. I know it's supposed to be the switch, but. I just kind of go that. I just go that bit further. You know. Yeah, you, you're right. I'm looking at the lyrics right now. For some reason, I always think I always thought he was saying death is not a flick of the off switch. So you're right. It says death is no, the is. the flick of the off switch. Yeah. All so right. we're saying okay. like it, it's saying like there is like there's no afterlife. There's no there's no like pathway between our life and the afterlife because there is no afterlife. There's just nothing. Yeah. Which is something interesting when you get in some of the later songs. Absolutely. Absolutely. Did you want to go to track three or did you, did you, I, yeah. I ain't got anything else to say, anything else, anything left to say on that one. You, you did a great job, sir. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'll be here all night. Well, actually, how long is this set? How long is this set for? I set her for two hours, two hours and we can go an hour over on, I believe. So if we got to take it to, okay. Three we if we gotta go three hours I think we're good so well, I, I, at this rate I think we're gonna go three <laughs> <laughs> we're at track three folks <laughs> yeah, we're at track three and we're an hour in an hour and change because we started like two minutes late but damn cat yeah, stories uh, anyway <laughs> no trust me no actually these these next like holy shit like these next three songs take up a page of my notes Ooh. holy shit yeah. So, uh, without further ado, yeah, if we'll get to that reading in a second, here's uh, track number three off the album, Keeper of the Ledger. <laughs> existence keeper of the ledger <clears throat> um this is this particular song right here made me realize or at least postulate that we okay he's right on the nose many times telling you that there's not much of an afterlife uh, and you know that there, there well he's not not that there's not much that there is not one but this makes me believe that he at either they did or he did believe at some point in some type of a force of that's out there now whether it be uh whether it be nature itself but you know he talks about nature and how there needs to be a balance um you know we're we're put on the earth to do whatever we want to do, but 
they're the only thing that nature is concerned about is just keeping this balance as to what you know as to what what you do and, and you we put so much thought into things that have we 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 overstate life i think is what he's trying to get at here uh and the only thing that nature's concerned about is that your ass is going right back into the ground uh or that you know you're going right back in to wherever you came from uh there isn't much after this um and there, there's a part near the end of the song where he says it is a fair assumption. That's one of my favorite parts of the song where he just kind of talks. And he says it is a fair assumption of our human nature to assume that the business of nature is inherently good. Now, I think what he's trying to get across there is that we kind of put a face on Mother Nature. We call her Mother Nature and that she is she is just you know, she is just and right and whatever. But really, when in fact, she's just she don't care. She give a shit less about you and what you think of her if she is a her. Um, but uh, that is that's my take on it. What what do you think there, Coop? <laughs> Let me wheel out my my word. <laughs> um, the first thing I have to say is something I've never ever thought about was nature is that it's a business and nature is a business. It's between us and nature and that we're allowed to live in nature. We're allowed to try and build up nature, destroy it, nurture it, whatever. But when we're done, we're going back to the earth to revive, help revitalize it. Like it's, it's like you're allowed to live here, but you're coming back. And that's not something I had never, ever, ever thought about. And I find mm-hmm. it just be incredibly, incredibly interesting. Now with uh, the keeper of the ledger, I say that's really almost a personification. Like that's almost a way of him making a, a not exactly a deity, like a human out of nature, humanizing yeah. nature in a way. Like so something that personifies it, not a deity, but that just kind of puts a face to it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like the song itself talks about how, we think that like the earth is something that loves us, uh, takes care of us. And really it's just, you know, we call it mother earth, but it's something that as humans, we've just tried to put a familiar nature, familial nature to it to mm-hmm. try and cope with the fact that it can be really violent. Sometimes We're like, Oh, well, mother earth that loves us and adores us. And it's really neutral. It doesn't care if we live or we die because no matter what we're coming back, like we're, we're coming back to the earth. We're going back. There's no, you know, there's no stopping at the circle of life. There's just birth, there's death. And it's just a big balance of life, and it just, it'll just it repeat for everybody. It's coming for everybody. Now, and it says, uh, start talking about religion as something, it kind of goes back to the Mother Earth, how we say it's, like, it's how the Mother Earth's benevolent, it's loving, and it's caring. And, well, we don't say we're at the will of Mother Nature as much, more it's now for it's God's will. But it's really just talks about the cold of nature. Like, you know, everybody says, oh, God is good and God is, you know, great. But it, with this idea, God doesn't matter. It's all about Mother Nature. As the song said, Mother Nature's cold. It's calculated. It's really all about it. It's very, it's very egocentric. It's, I like how he calls it the cult of nature. <laughs> and it only cares about... It only cares about a few things. It cares about when you live, when you die, and the fact that you don't get past the time of when you're supposed to die. It keeps track of it. That's what the keeper does. And right before we hit that solo, actually, uh, I think of it saying that we've created like things like myths and purpose to try and cope with like the harsh reality that is nature, that is the earth. Like there's a tor- huge tornado wrecks tons of people. We don't blame nature because that's not something we have a face on. That is something that we live on. That's very tangible. It's very tangible. We can feel it in our hands. I feel like the song is saying we create deities and stuff to where we can kind of blame something outside of us, outside of where we are, that we're kind of can look up at the stars and be like, Oh, how dare you? You know, something, something like that. But, it's you know nature it's talking about isn't it's not good and i agree it's not a, nature isn't good it's not bad 
it's just like it it yeah. it just it does it has, it does things and it doesn't care because you're going back like like that's what I keep saying you're going back to the earth return to the earth as it says and it's mm-hmm. I just the last thing it's have is but nature doesn't care about you who you are who you could be who you were it just wants you for the natural resource that you are and that everything in life no matter what it is ends up being back to nature. It's, you know, it, it, it's interesting to see how he puts Keeper of the Ledger. When I first saw that, that title, um, I thought this was going to be a song about death because that, for some reason, I thought the Keeper of the Ledger, oh, yeah, that's, that's going to be death. But really, in fact, how many, just like he says, it's cold, it's calculating. If you, are an accountant, you know, your job is to count numbers. Uh, and if you're mm-hmm. equating mother nature with an accountant, uh, that's all she cares about is just making sure everything balances out. Um, and, but I think a lot of it is just like you said, I, I agree with, with what you said there. He's, he's making it obvious that m- mother nature is, we put a face on on her and we i i look as much i look as nature actually being a force which i don't know if that's an actual thing or not uh you know that it's something that i tend to use to comprehend things that are going on around me uh you know just like you'd mentioned somebody uh, a, a storm happens um and there are plenty of times where i'm just like well what we got fracking going on up here too, which apparently is causing earthquakes and all sorts of stuff. And, and we don't know what that is having an effect on what we would call mother nature. Granted, it's, it's just a way of balancing things. I mean, I I'm just spouting off here. I'm going off on a tangent, but, uh, that's, uh, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Does it? <laughs> uh, Dang. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all fine to me. I can take it. All right, all right then. But yeah, I I, I couldn't have said it any better, man. Yeah, so that's why I wanted that, that's why I wanted you to talk first. Because <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, like I said, I want you to get your ideas off so I can play off of them and then kind of say what I'm going to say. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Tr- uh, so the next one here. Anything else you wanted to say on Keeper of the Ledger? No, no, uh, Keeper of the Ledger. So it's a really good song. Like it's really interesting, and again, it's one of those. It's another. It's another song with a theme that is not often touched in music. Not that I really hear. We don't. We don't get many songs about, you know, how Mother Earth isn't a mother. It's really just kind of a. It's just an entity that it, it, t- it gives and takes exactly what it means to yeah i hear you but uh, i'm done with keeper of the ledger so hey we got that done in record time it was only like what 10 minutes <laughs> <laughs> so now we're on to uh another really interesting song and one that kind of looks at religion in a different way here's track number four off of woods five traveling my alone. favorite my favorite traveling yeah. alone all right
Traveling alone, what a what an awesome song. Um, my favorite off of this album, and and because it spoke to me the first time I actually heard it. Um, it's clearly a story about a non-believer and a believer talking. Um, to me, I thought it was a very sad song. It felt like a very sad song. Uh, you could tell that it just, it, it hooked me with the, uh, I wish I could tell you what kind of instrument was being played there. It, some, it sounded like some type of a horn. Um, but it, it really, the flow of that song really grabbed me. Now, lyrically, um, when they're talking about basically the guys coming up it, to me, it feels like the guys coming up to him and saying, Hey, you know, somebody's trying to either spread the good word or, uh, you spread, you know, talk to them about God and our guy who's singing here, who, who, who's talking uh, throughout this song, you know, talks about how he, doesn't see the evidence of God. Now I got kind of an I uh, a kind of a an impression that this person who did not believe in God was having, you know, I wouldn't say troubles with his life, but it was. It sounded like he came from a very different back different background. There's a part in here where he says specifically where it says, but when I look around you, I understand why you believe. I see your evidence of God all around me. So he clearly can see what this guy is talking about. Um, you have, so therefore you are, but I have not. So I didn't know if what he was talking about here was, uh, you know, was it a, a rich versus poor situation where this guy is clearly living in a, a, a lush, lavish lifestyle to where he has the, not the option, but the, the privilege to believe in God. Uh, you know, I'm a, me personally, I'm a white male American living in, uh, you know, living in Ohio. I've got a great job. I wouldn't understand what it would be like to be somebody who lives on the street or lives in, in you know, uh, the alleyway. Uh, would that would I believe in God then? I, I don't know. Um, but it clearly was some guy who had. To me, it felt like I say clearly. I, I mean clearly to me. But it, this guy had issues, uh, and he didn't believe in God. And he's talking to somebody that does, uh, who seems to possibly have more. Um, now Coop, you've, you've explained a little bit about, uh, this song to me and, uh, I want you to go ahead and take over here, man. Cause I know you got a lot more insight on it than I do. Uh, yeah, actually it was, uh, from that same site I've used before. They talked about how in an interview talking about the album, he talked about the David Gold talked about the song and how this was about when he was traveling through Kuwait, actually, he was, uh, traveling through it and, you know, he's, an atheist, and they're mainly an Islamic, they're, they're uh, mostly an Islamic uh, country. 
And he was looking at it kind of like, well, of course they would believe in a God. I mean, look at it. They have all this, you know, all this beauty and this abundance and everything, you know, it's given to them, you know, it's, it's given, why would they not believe in a God? You know, they, they have all this beauty. Why not? And he's looked at his, himself and he's like, well, I've never had anything like that. You know, he talks about, I've just struggled to survive. Like I, w- I didn't have time to worship a God. I was busy doing other, I was way too busy doing other things. So it's, it's kind of looking at, you know, of course they believe, they believe in God. Why wouldn't they? And it also kind of looks at why would you not, like, why, why wouldn't you if you were there, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, yeah. The, and, uh, so yeah, more, sorry. No, I, I, I jump, dude. I'm, I've been jumping in here in the middle of your stuff. I, I'm gonna let you finish because I'm gonna shut up. I promise. Oh no, you're good. You're good. Uh, yeah, as I was, uh, I was just looking at more of my notes here because it's talking. I feel like the song's talking about more of, uh, you know, kind of him wrestling with his his brain. Like, you know, they're really happy and he's really not, and you know, they have something to believe in. Does does what he think is true, like what he thinks is a universal truth, is it worth trying to break up their happiness, you know, to tell them? That's the way I, that's the way I've always looked at this song. Like, I don't necessarily look at this as a sad song. I look at this as a song that's asking a really important question. Like, okay, well, you believe in something they don't. Well, do you tell them? Because, I mean, we're talking about a lot of spiritual stuff that technically we don't know anything about. I mean, these people are really happy believing what they believe in. So does he have, like, the right to to try and take away that, you know, as I said, take away, take away their uh, world and replace it with reality? But uh, what I have more of here is that I said that he looks at his own point of view and that realizes that, you know, he believes in nothing because, you know, they don't have anything. He doesn't – they have everything. He really didn't have a whole lot. He just kind of had a regular Canadian – life, you know, in the mm-hmm. cold in the winter with all the dead trees and everything. But yeah. I said that I said that perhaps like at the end of the song, the man that he talk that comes up and talks to him says he sees no evidence of the of God, the man in the West, which I love that. I think that's a great uh play on words because he's he talks about how he sees their evidence of God all around him. Like the things they point at and say, you know, well, of course we have God. Look at this. And he sees it and he acknowledges it. He doesn't believe that's where it's from, but he can see why they would believe it. But when they look at him, they don't see any belief in God in him. And it's it's very obvious to them. But I I think this is one of those songs. Heck, I wish you'd sit down with a theology major on this one. That'd be interesting. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. You know, at the end of this song, just like you're talking about, that, that final line where he says, when I asked him, he shook his head and stared. I see no evidence of God in the men from the West that it, you know, he, he takes it upon himself to, you know, he, he's out, he's having an open discussion with this guy and it doesn't sound like he's judging who this guy is in any way, but at the end, it definitely sounds like the guy that he's talking to looks at him and with disapproval, it just says, I don't see any evidence. And then it, it, it's almost like he, he's decided to not have anything to do with him because uh, the guy he's talking to, that is, doesn't want to have anything to do with him because he, he doesn't believe in God um, and disproves of that and leaves. Um, what do you think? I, don't know. I didn't think of it like that, but I could definitely see it going that way. I just thought maybe the, the other guy looked at him and just was disappointed, but not necessarily disgusted to the point of not talking to him. So just thinking about when he's talking about the West, I'm wondering if we're also looking at something like industrialized society versus more of a rural thing. Because, you know, when you think of the West, you think of, well, New York, Los Angeles, Texas, that's about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> other places, that's what they think of. <laughs> you know, I'm wondering if maybe that's another angle to look at it as. Like, yeah, they have all this abundance and beauty and everything, stuff that naturally came from the ground and came to them and was nurtured by the rain and the sun, you know, by, by God. And in the West, most of like, you know, we have a lot of city life where it's very man-made. So I'm wondering yeah. if like, you know, maybe you could look at it like that as well. Like, 
the reason maybe that's like the reason why maybe it's like a disconnect with like a more modern modern life but I, I don't know it's really interesting i like when you can look at something in more than one way absolutely the um the uh oh man what was i going to say here the oh okay you would would it be too far off to say that kuwait is i mean a pretty pretty religious place to go you talk about the bible belt where you're at um wouldn't you say that that's a pretty uh uh pretty religious driven place to be uh, yeah it's right there israel and jordan and <laughs> yeah. yeah and this in this so guy with his there. views with his views i i don't think he was it's not like we sent him there uh he chose to take yeah. he chose to live there and i think that kind of speaks a lot to the even though he he was setting his views he was quite open minded i mean he oh yeah there. he seems like a really he seemed like a really nice kind open minded guy cuz he wrote really good mm-hmm. music and i think he was i think maybe like he was traveling through it but i love the idea of like traveling alone is like that's the like the interpretation of that is well he's traveling by himself he has no god it's just when he travels it's just him he's not with any sort of deity or higher power it's him and that's it and i think i really like that though i wonder i'm actually wondering see i wish damn it david gold why did you have to get into that car wreck <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna I, just I, go ahead and put it out there that might not have been his fault but <laughs> well it was a single um, uh it was a single car accident when it said. Oh, really? But it was in like, but I think I read it was December 21st in Canada. So I'm assuming really icy roads. Ah, uh, yeah, I would figure so. The, so what are you thinking? You got another, you got another idea of what it could possibly mean? No, I, I was just wondering. I was like, I wish, I wish you were alive to kind of be like, yeah, or maybe kind of expound on how was the timing go away? Because, yeah, he, I well, I'll tell I you, I've never I'll, heard a whole lot about it. There is an interview. If uh, as I was preparing, I sent you that one interview. I actually found an interview because he apparently did the Kuwait time <clears throat> in between four and five, uh, or yeah, maybe it was. Maybe it was. No, I think it was before. I think it was after four. But anyway, he actually talked was. to a, he talked to a rock station about uh, about his time in Kuwait. It wasn't, you know, he didn't go into a whole lot of detail, but he was a teacher over there. Um, and I don't know what exactly he was teaching, but that's that was what he was doing. He was a teacher. Uh, he talked about somebody was telling him in order to get ready for the trip, take a hobby because you're obviously going to have culture shock. And the only thing you could probably get, you know, you, the only thing that's going to make you feel somewhat at ease is to take a hobby. Well, of course, he takes his guitar. And apparently there's there's some kind of a weird way that the culture looks upon music. Um, yeah. And I, I don't think that the he was able to play his guitar. Not uh, he made it more. He made it sound more like he was more focused on the job that he was doing. Um, but uh, when he was talking about how the record label got a hold of him and he actually had to cut it short down there and give them his he gave him a two months notice so he could come back and I assume either record. You know, like I said, either four or five, but, uh, but there is that there is, it's part three. I can't remember the name of it, but you could, if you look up woods of e on YouTube and just type in an interview after that, you should be able to find it. He, he talked a little bit about it. He doesn't go into the, uh, into the depth of these songs because at that point, I don't think they had been written. Um, but, uh, uh, anyway, yeah, you, you can you can probably check that out, man. If you're interested, dude, uh, you you should be able to find that on YouTube pretty easily. I, I just wanted to say another thing real quick about traveling alone. It, like I said, it's one of my favorite songs, uh, just because of the dichotomy and what a lot of people struggle with. You know, day to day, you know, when when a spiritual life, we, we we run into people who are are from different religions, different different backgrounds, and all that stuff. Uh, just like I had said, this guy picked up with the way, you know, picked up and left and went to Kuwait to to teach. Traveling alone, maybe there wasn't too many people that, and I think you may have already said this, but there wasn't too many people that had his same view. There, oh, no. There, the, 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 his same view on life. That would, uh, 
probably nobody that would say anything. He could have went over there. Yeah, he could have went over went over there with twenty other people from the United States also, and maybe they all believed in God, and he felt alone because he didn't. Um, yeah, or so, twenty people from Canada. Or, yeah, oh yeah, that's right. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's all I have to say on that, man. Okay, because he he actually said a boot. That made me. So that is right. He did say that. <laughs> he did say that straight up, was, right out on the front on purpose. <laughs> I was like, you said a boot. Oh, that makes my day. <laughs> yeah, it was really cool. Like I said, I should probably go listen to some of those interviews since I so obsessed over this band. <laughs> well, he passed. He passed. What was the day again? It was. It was in 2011. Yeah, it was. I think it was just, I just looked there. It was December 21st, 2011. Um. Okay. Yeah. They they released that interview. Uh, it was four years ago. So they must have put that out there probably. <clears throat> you know, after he shortly after he passed, um, or right before. Yeah. But uh, that was, four it was years. sad stuff. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Four years ago. Isn't that crazy? That really is. Like, I was thinking the other day, like, I keep thinking 10 years ago it was 2000. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Add another okay. add another half a decade. Like, I, I realized I was screwed when at the school I was uh, doing stuff at. I named the T. I was like, yeah, man, I love the PS2. And the kid's like, why would you be playing a PS2 that old? Like, I got a PS3. <laughs> why would I play a PS2? I'm like, I just realized these bastards were born. Uh, the 360 came out. Oh, wow, dude. That's insane. Yeah, right? Like, gosh. Go oh, golly, gosh, I feel you're, so old. You're, yeah, you're going to be you're gonna be in the rocker in the wheelchair, just like me and Radlich here in a few, so just get prepared, Coop. <laughs> Radlich is in the rocker. He's in the grave. <laughs> one foot in the grave, one foot, one foot in the grave, one foot on the earth, two hands in the air with four horns going. And all, and pants on the ground. Pants. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah. Uh, I hope you're having fun listening to this, Mark, since I'm sure you're going to listen to it. Oh yeah, three hours. Right. Three hours. I'd love. I'd love for him to come back and give us a great, a, a great uh, uh, a review, a glowing review on our three-hour podcast. He's not going to listen to. <laughs> He's probably going to get halfway through it and go, "Oh shit." <laughs> <laughs> He'll go to work like I mean, six hey. times, and uh, it, it'll be like halfway through the podcast. Yeah, well, yeah, because he only works like fifteen minutes away from his house now. Yeah, yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, yeah instead of like an hour and a half. Well, that's good. That's good. I mean, heck, I have to make a thirty-minute commute to my school that I'm teaching at this semester. I have to be there an hour before the kids. So school starts Lovely. at I don't know, like seven forty-five. I got to be there at six forty-five, and I got to get up. 30 minutes to get there, so it's another 30 minutes to get ready. Oh, fuck me. Oh. Damn, dude. Yeah, and then I gotta be there an hour after the kid, so 3.15, 4.15, I won't get home till 5. The oh. life of a teacher, buddy. I can't wait to hear all sorts oh. of stories as you as you, as you you progress in your career, man. <clears throat> yeah, I'll, I'll be like uh, Melissa over there, being like, oh, well, that kid, that school sucks. That kid deserved it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, damn, uh, was a jaded much? She she uh, don't pull no punches, she, man. She don't pull no punches. Uh, she don't play that shit. But, she uh, don't play right. that. So how fitting is it that halfway through the song, halfway through the podcast, we have reached the half almost halfway point of the album. Yeah. So uh, we're rocking and rolling. Right, we're headbanging and waxing philosophy, and yeah, it's great. But anyways, here's track number five off of Woods Five. <laughs> here's Adora Vivos. <laughs> Thank you. 
moment of silence But not one moment more The dead are to be forgotten We are here to be Adora Vivos. Um, this to me is the best song off of this album. It, it's not, you know, definitely Traveling Alone is my favorite. But as far as upbeat, um, you know, great sounding songs go, this is to me is the best off of this album. Um, right on the nose positive message in my idea in, in my eyes um he's he's coming out there and he's saying that this is again this is we have we have one life to live live it do not waste your time over things that you know may not even have a whole lot of meaning uh while it seems like what he's talking about is if somebody passes away, we have funerals, we have many people, obviously, and I'm not saying that people shouldn't grieve, but he definitely, it definitely sounds like he is. <laughs> he's coming out and saying, don't, don't waste your time. Do not worship those that are in death, that have died and have gone. Um, praise the living. Praise those that are around you. Don't wait until somebody passes in order to let them know that you love and you care about them. Because uh, that's really all. That's really all that we should be put on this earth to do is to love and let other people know. That you let me let me let me put my my tie dye shirt on here. Raise my two fingers in the air. Peace, dude. Peace, love and harmony. Um, that's what we're here to do. Love, man. And that is that's the way I take this song. It sounds like he is getting across the point that do not do not waste your time grieving over somebody if you did not take the opportunity to tell them how you felt prior to hand there we go coop adora vivos i think it's portuguese is it, no reason, I don't it was... i'm guessing it go I, ahead. Uh, I just google translated it and that auto uh it went to auto detect the portuguese oh, okay so there you go and it says he loves living is what it says in Portuguese. I don't know if that's what it means in Portuguese, but there you go. 
Very but, good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, really interesting song, and it's got themes that I'm definitely going to get at when we get to Kiss My Ashes Goodbye. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. uh, I thought it was definitely, yeah, that's a very big irony, that song is. But uh, <laughs> I feel like the song started out by telling, saying, give a moment of respect for the dead. You know, just give them, give them one, because, you know, just say goodbye, but don't, don't wait to take too long to do so. And it's like, you know, you should let those who are around you let them know how much they mean to you. And we do live in a society of like accolades and medals, but just don't focus on the accolades of the past. I felt like this song was very much about living in the present and appreciating the things around you while they're still there before they're gone, which is a theme I think that's on this. I think that's a theme that kind of goes through this album quite a bit. The, yeah. the one thing I actually put a whole sentence out that was a, like, you know, Mortal men are living gods, and I put I put their the actual gods because they're here. We know them, we've seen them, and we can hear directly from from them. Unlike any god, which I was like, ah, oh, well. <laughs> I put almost in parentheses because I'm like, well, I don't know all the gods. Uh. <laughs> we we as as metal faithful, we have I have learned more about other gods. <laughs> Than I ever have before uh, listening, especially listening to this show. Um, some of the bands you guys have covered. I think he was just given, wasn't you just given some, uh, uh, what was it, Nordic? Was it the last album you guys reviewed where you were covering some of the, no, it wasn't Cradle of Filth. What was the one prior to it that? Was Unleashed. Unleashed, thank you. Yeah, Unleashed. I was, actually, I could have bought that album and I didn't. I bought Japanese no. comic books instead. <laughs> I, I I would I would I I'm the comic book guy so I can't I cannot uh, I can't uh, I can't say anything bad about that. Yeah yeah well I also bought two Toxic Holocaust albums instead because it came down to like the seven dollar Unleashed album or buy two Toxic Holocaust albums for eleven so I was like bang yeah, yeah, yeah. for your buck. Holocaust. Yeah yeah I mean yeah, bang for your buck and it's Toxic Holocaust I love that band. They're great. You'd like them. They're really thrashy, even though they do have that whole gra- like black metal rasp to the vocals. Cool. Yeah, I get what you're saying about uh, gods and religion. Actually, one of the coolest things is uh, I'm staring at the poster right now. There's one metal band that actually, uh, I think they wanted at least two albums, but they're called Eagle Twin, and all of their music focuses on uh, Native American mythology. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I actually have one of the albums. I've only listened to it once because it's kind of it's one of those albums that's really hard to listen to in the car because it's like almost like a sludge metal band. Mm-hmm. A whole lot of reverb and it's kind of slow. It's one of those. It's it's really hard to kind of like get into while you're driving. <laughs> I hear they're, you. They're a really cool. Band. They're a really cool band, but yeah, like that's I feel like metal does give us that thing. We do get a lot of a lot of gods and really the song just boils down to me like i don't really have a whole ton of it it's a whole a whole ton on it that doesn't kind of repeat itself a little but you know live you know if you're not living in the moment just you need to you need to love the people around you you need to let them know that you love them because they're not going to be here forever they're going to be gone and you don't want to live your life looking into the past and worshiping people that are dead you need, to lo- you need to love the people that are here. Because I put, like, you know, when people die, I'm not sure if it's this song or another one, people will die, uh, but you don't need to dwell on them too long because if you dwell there, there's going to be other people you miss, and it's just going to create a cycle. Yeah. For for a doom metal album, you find a lot more of, well, there's a bunch of songs in here that have such a positive message. Uh, and this is definitely one of them, in in my opinion, for sure. This is probably, like I said, I, I think this, as far as sound goes, it definitely sounds like the best song on, on the album. But as far as positive message goes, too, it's it's probably the most positive song on here. Um, that, yeah, that's about all I got to say on that one. We you got anything else you want to say on it? Uh, well, I'd say, I'd say it's kind of positive. Uh, it almost sounds seem like it's more. Uh, accusatory towards the people who do dwell too much on the dead. <laughs> okay. It says, uh, like the people who aren't, it says, well, some people are civilized. They love the living while they're still alive. 
I almost feel like that's kind of implying that the people who don't aren't as civilized as the people who do. Like, they don't realize that they're not to that level of advancement. I don't know if I'm reading into that. But I will say this is a this is a song that you can definitely spin positively. There is a positive... There is definitely positive things in this. This isn't like, you know, some of the songs like, you know, well, there's no afterlife. No, this is one of those songs that you're like, okay, what's well, telling you? It's giving you, trying to give you fatherly advice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's, trying to, it's trying to sit you down, put your arm around you, and go, you know, son, you need to, you really need to focus on the people around you and not focus on the people who have died. You know, you need to live, live all you can because you only live once. Except and don't do great. yellow, that's true. <laughs> um, gray Skies and Electric Light shows up again in here, too, in that in, in this particular song, which, you know, that gets repeated every once in a while. <clears throat> um, yeah, like, I, as I got to the last song on this album, like, I'll be tying other things back. There's a lot of concepts that are visited earlier in the album and in the middle of the album that around the end of the album, you can kind of trace back to where they go. Like okay. there's themes that kind of, they're, they're recurring themes. Okay. Very cool. All right, man. Anything else? I don't have anything else. So now we're on to the one, uh, the song that hits me straight in the feels. Know about you, but I've definitely had this happen once or twice in my life. Eh, uh, oh, it sucks. But all right, here it is. Yeah, go hug your cat song of the album. <laughs> Here's Silver. <laughs> Win your silver. Ah, uh, the songs about the USA uh, men's hockey team in the Olympics. 
Uh, sad song, man. This is a this is a rough one, and I know, just like you said, it does hit you right in the feels, punches you right there, and kind of uh, punches you again, and then it punches lingered. you again. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Um, I mean, <laughs> Coop, you, you you said prior to the song, you know, it didn't know if it. Uh, if any of this happened to me or if anything like that. Now I am one of the lucky ones that had married my, my high school sweetheart. Oh, um, you know, yeah. 92 back, back in 92, we started dating and then 98, we got married. Uh, and, and 92, I was f- 14. So Ooh, I was uh, uh, one. <laughs> uh, man, uh, I was, I'm putting the middle finger back down. Um, the uh, you're not as bad as Radlich. <laughs> He's like when yeah. I was in high school, and I'm like when I was in my mother's womb. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, obviously, what this song's about is uh, coming in second all the time in in love, and he has got. He's definitely got a significant other, uh, other, other, uh, a def, uh, a, a significant other that he's trying to woo, but it turns out she, you know, she's kind of waffler. She's kind of a, a, a bit of a waffler. Now, luckily, in my own experience, I've never had to deal with that. Um, the uh, the whole dating scene, I don't think I've. It's well, so we're going on more than twenty years. Um, but it's a sad song because no matter what this dude tries to do, he's there for this girl left and fucking right, man. And it just is not good enough. She will, she, she'll be there with him when the good times are rolling. But then if she finds somebody else, he is, he's kicked to the curb. Um, after you, sir, or please, please go. Yeah, actually, the song actually it's it's not he, she's gonna be there when the good times are rolling. She's gone when the good times are rolling. <laughs> she's only there when she needs him. It's true. Yeah, I, I had a friend of mine. She didn't listen to this shit, so it's good. But no, she had a. Uh, well, you know, I was kind of one that was like I was always there, always gave her, always there. You know, the crying shoulder, the person you call, all that stuff. You know, mm-hmm. I got a crush on the girl, you know, whatever. I um, well, figured it'd be nice enough. Then she moved to Kentucky, and I still was like, she once got in a car wreck and called me. And she's like, what do I do? I'm like, well, you don't drive off. And she drove off. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. So she funny. didn't listen to your ass. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, she, she, all she had to do was uh, she got somebody at an automotive place to pop out the dent, and she colored over the scratches with Sharpie. I'm like, that's nice. so stupid. It's actually brilliant. But yeah, nice. then she got married to a guy who was super controlling, and then she divorced that guy. But I kind of noticed why well, it, it took it took uh, her re-adding me on Facebook, and then being like, "Hey, can you send this message to my current boyfriend? I'm afraid he's uh, you know I just got out of this relationship." And I'm like, "Okay," and I did, and you know we talked for a while, and then she stopped talking to me again, and then it mm. kind of uh, and then I was like, "Okay," it started I was like that kind of sucks. And then she, uh, the guy broke up with her. So I'm like, you know, you know what, uh, you know, tonight, just give me a call. We'll get through this. You know, I'll help you out. She's like, okay. I called her about three times and she's like, oh, sorry. I was uh, talking to, you know, what's his nuts. So like, oh, he got back to <laughs> back together with me and then it clicked with me. I'm like, I'm that guy. Which, uh, you know, we're not like the guy in this song necessarily, but like, you know, that person that, it's very kind. Of, I don't know if she is intentionally emotionally manipulative, but it is because it's like she comes to you, gets you to do the stuff that you really don't want to do, but you'll do it because you know you you, you know you want to do it for the people you love, and then disappears when the times are good. And that's what I feel like this song is about. It's about a guy who really cares for somebody and loves her a lot, and is always there. He worries about her all the time. He cries with her when she's she needs someone to cry with. But when the going is when the going's good, when she doesn't need him, she's out with this other guy, and he knows it. Like he knows it's a doomed relationship, but he stays mm-hmm. in it. 
And I think another dimension to this is that when I went through it and kind of analyzed it and took my notes, we talked about, you know, he doesn't want unconditional love. It just wants to be judged. I think that might be his way of uh, kind of realizing that, yeah, like she's not treating him right and it's really bad. He's putting himself in that situation and he knows it. And uh-huh. but he doesn't. It's like he doesn't have that much problem with it because he knows. And he's like, yeah, he wants. He doesn't want that unconditional love. He, I guess, he always wants to prove himself. And probably, I, I, you know, I feel like that kind of adds another dimension. It's not just one of those songs like, oh, she's so bad, she's mean. How could she? But it adds another dimension of, well, how could she? But I let her do it, and I know I let her do it. So, really, mm-hmm. I, I get on as much as she brings it on. And I kind of realized that. I'm like, you know, that song's even deeper than I thought. And as for that girl, well, I mean, I I, I think the last time, it was months ago. I'm like, oh, hey, you're doing nothing. I was like, all right, well, if you need me, just let me know. I'm always here. I can at least be that, do that for you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, and I got no response because there was ones because we had, our birthdays are two days apart. Like it's like twelve twelve a.m. that day. I'm like, you know, just big long happy birthday. You're like, hey, you know, it's your birthday. I hope I was the first one. But a month later, she's like, oh, I didn't see that. see that. Sorry, and I'm like, bull fucking shit. <laughs> uh, I, I, was, I was I was born I was born at night, but not last night. There you go. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, that's when I was like, I smell bullshit. 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 But this is, I feel like with a lot of the songs that was you pretty do, like Shards of Love, it's that song talks about like the husband wanting the wife to come back and keeps pleading with her. But then it brings up her side where she talks about, well, you know, we had the good times. What about all the horrible times? And it just kind of has that back and forth pull to it. And I like how Mm -hmm. at least, they try to look at other sides of the story. And I really appreciate that because I'm not going to lie. I don't know about you. I get tired of bitchy love songs like, Oh, she hurt me. And to be fair, those are songs that are need to be made. And a lot of them are warranted, but there's other sides are like, but what about her side? <laughs> That's true. That's yeah, true. There's my, uh, spiel. there's my spiel on uh, silver, which is, well, it's actually not the most hug your cat song on the album. But uh, <laughs> definitely hug your. It was definitely a hug your cat because you're alone song. <laughs> yeah. Now, is this is this particular song? Was this your? Was this this? I, I guess your favorite off the album. Actually, no, it wasn't. No. Okay. We'll, we'll get to that one later. No, it's right. one of my favorites. Like, I, like at this point, it's kind of. I have favorites on this album, but I feel like giving it a favorite puts it above all of them. Like I love every song in this album. Okay. All right. Like, I, got I you. can go through, you know, I can go through all these songs, listen to them on a loop, but it's funny. I was listening to this album in the car for preparation. And while I was enjoying it, I'm like, something's missing here. And then I'm like, I really want to listen to Thrawson and Blood. <laughs> yeah, so buddy. I that on. Yeah. So I threw that on and I'm like, okay, this is close enough. <laughs> And now I know we're going to be doing we're going to be doing plugs here, but uh, is that something that's definitely going to be happening, or did Radulich, uh is is Radulich, uh, got that date marked down for for another album? I forget which day that is, but uh, we'll okay. we'll talk to him next next show. Uh, we'll probably make sure to get that knocked out because that's another album. That one's a little different because I don't quite. That one's more of a concept album telling a, hor- a hero's journey than. This yeah, so interesting. I'm gonna to have to go listen to a podcast. Joel Violette, who is the guitarist for this album, and he's the singer and guitarist for Throssom Blood. He kind of did an album talk. He did a podcast talking about you know the songs and stuff. So I feel like listening to that would give me some background info and kind of even help me shape my own opinions a little better on lyrical content. Good deal, sir. Good deal. All yeah. right, man. So, um, yeah, it- from there. Oh yeah, we're uh shit. We got what four minutes of live time. Yes, sir. Okay, well, anybody listening? Hi, Savannah. Yeah, she's she's listening. Isn't she just wonderful? <laughs> but, Hello. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she. Yeah, my lady friend Savannah is listening. She. It's awesome that she'll do it because she's awesome and everything. But uh, yeah, anybody listening? 
besides her and her. Uh, we got about four, three or four minutes of uh, live time going. Uh, once that, that time's up, it'll cut the podcast off, and you'll have to come back later, probably you know about 1 a.m., to listen to the last hour of the podcast. I'll probably guarantee you, considering we haven't mentioned the library yet, <laughs> we're going three hours. <laughs> so, uh, Don't yeah. mention the library because blog talk tends to cut our ass off when we start talking to the library. So you're saying we need to get the plugs done and then talk to library. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what blog talk has against the, the library system. But yeah, anybody listening, just come back to this. Now you know when we're done, or download it for later. Give it a listen. We're going to get into some of my favorite songs on this album. Which, yeah, you know, that's not saying much. I fucking adore this album. Like, this... If, if this if this album were a statue, the sun would like rise and fall out of its ass. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> that's quite a visual. <laughs> yes. You're imagining the guy on the album cover with his hands into his face and the other guy <laughs> that's on the fucking wooden boat. Like the like the fucking sun is rising and falling out of both those guys' asses. <laughs> we Goodness. Yeah, that, yes, sir. Love. You gotta gotta bring the levity. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. All right. Well, well, we're gonna go from levity to track number seven off this album. The interestingly named "Career Suicide" is not real suicide. well on the nose there career suicide is not real suicide this feels like he is trying to get across that you put a lot of weight on a bunch of things that don't matter uh specifically this career suicide now when somebody says you committed career suicide you did some stupid ass thing to screw up what your whole plan was. Now, the problem is, is that a lot of people that do that feel that now their life is ruined and they're the only other thing they should do is go ahead and actually commit suicide. Um, now, Coop, if I go into this and I, I find out that there's a totally different meaning, I'm going to be pissed because I, 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 I swear this is what it's got to mean. 
So they, <laughs> you're sitting there laughing because I'm I'm worried now, um, but it it just feels like at some point in this guy's life he's he's run into somebody who you know thought that that was the only that that was it you know if they didn't have a great career if they weren't making a ton of money uh, and then all of a sudden that got taken away from them well that's that's the end of everything they might as well just go ahead and kill themselves. As many uh, as many of the tracks we've already listened to, is a few. I just said a few of the tracks that we've listened to already. It is a focus on life and the living and what you're doing in the now that matters. Um, if you lose, if you lose all your money, uh, you you lose all your all your opportunity. You're still alive. You still have that shot. It's it's not over with. Okay, you can start over. You can do something new with yourself. Um, there's more to life than success. He says that in this song. And that's that's absolutely true. Um, there it is. Coop, expound, please, sir. I will expound and expand and uh, exclamate. There we go. All right. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, I started this out. I really only have like two paragraphs. <laughs> only two. Now only two. I said that uh, I was saying we, we have a society that preaches about how you need to go for your dreams and reach them. And if you don't reach them, you're it's almost like you're without something. Some people, that I means you're not even living. But this song really kind of says, and I agree with, so that's kind of a fallacy that you know, you're going to, you're going to go on. Even if you your dreams are dead, you're going to live on. You're going to try and build them again. And I love how it keeps saying it's not the end of the world because that goes back. See, see, this goes back to uh, keeper of the ledger, how it's not the end of the world because we're expendable. The earth has so many different versions of us as a person. It says it, it can create infinite copies. The earth can create infinite copies. So it's not the end of the world. It will never be the end of the world until the world itself is gone. So don't worry about the uh, the world. The world's not ending. Like the only world that might be in trouble is yours. And and the grand scale of things that doesn't mean shit. Yeah, that's pretty uh, small. Yeah, it's really small. So you have you just have one one life. The earth's got so many others of you. That, you know, there's not really any reason for one failure to be the, the end of the world for you because you you can rebuild, you can start anew. Even if you tank your life, you can always try and claw back. Like, don't, even if you're stuck in a corner, like, you can commit career suicide because that's not, that's not really killing yourself. That's just killing, like, that's closing a door maybe. That's killing mm-hmm. an opportunity. But that's not necessarily something that's going to end your life. That's just, you know, as I said, this career suicide, it's not real suicide. It's not really ending your life, What it really is. It's just kind of ending an opportunity and not the end of the world. Don't, don't, don't shoot yourself, idiot. One, okay. One minute. All right. Hulk Hogan. Oh, Do you think, no. <laughs> What do you think about this song, and if that apply, if any of that would apply to him right now at this moment? Well, I mean, he hasn't killed himself. Like, sure, he said things about minorities and sexual minorities, and said things about the gays and blacks, and I'm sure he said something about Jews somewhere in there. And had you had that that one? Had you? I don't know if you've had the opportunity to watch it, or even if you were interested in it. But um, God, I, I'm not going to watch the Hulk Hogan sex tape for the love of God. No, I'm not bringing that up. Jeez, Louise. They A and E did a doc. A <laughs> and E did a documentary, I think, or somewhat of a uh, like a biography, or I don't think it was a biography on Hulk Hogan, but it was some like like uh, a, a documentary of some sorts, and. Hogan was had a gun in his mouth at one point and was getting ready to pull the trigger because he thought his life was over. This was after Linda had left him. And I think this was uh, sometime after, you know, the whole thing happened with his son where his son was in jail. 
um, and came really close to actually killing himself, according to this documentary, before he actually got a phone call from somebody who uh, I think is Layla Ali. And uh, he ended up getting a phone call from her and it was about the American gladiators or some bull crap. But without that phone call, he just about blew his own brains out. Um, I could almost see, you know, that actually becoming a, a, another, a factor again in this guy's life with what just happened here recently. Uh, so someone needs to send this song to Hulk Hogan and say, listen, Terry, career suicide is not real suicide. That's my, that, there you go, Coop. I'm done. Are you there? Coop left. Oh my gosh. And we're in the overrun and I don't know. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can get him back. I'm going to, man, he dropped I, the Hulk Hogan talk I actually made him leave the podcast. I've never seen anything like that before in my life. I didn't know he was that anti Hulk Hogan. Um, let me bring up Facebook here real quick and see if I can send him a invite. Uh, I'm going to kill some time here. Uh, Got to get Coop's email address. Woods of you pre for, or, oh boy, see, I already screwed it up. Woods of E pray. What do you guys think so far? I hope you guys are enjoying it. It's been quite a deep album, obviously one of Coop's favorite, and I do not want to continue this podcast without him. So, I don't think it's going to let him call back in because we're in the over, overrun. Let me see if it'll let me send him an invite. Um, so that was career suicide. <laughs> Blog talk. Coop mentioned the library and it kicked him off of there. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and get into track eight which is modern life architecture again modern life coming up and i'm gonna play a little bit of this try and get coop back on here because i don't feel right continuing with the album without him on here so bear with me i'm gonna play a little bit of this track enjoy it uh, it's a seven seven and a half minute track folks i mean you're gonna be all right so give me a moment here we'll, we'll play some i'm gonna mute myself and we'll get this figured out
Okay, well, <clears throat> we might be at a loss here with Coop um, trying to get uh, trying to get him back in. Send him an email invite, but uh, this the way Blog Talk does things when we're in a when we're in the overrun, sometimes we can get. Uh, I know that we can't have any callers in the overrun, but um, as for guests, I don't think it'll let you Skype back in. I sent him a link, so if he if he can get back on here, great. If not, I'm going to soldier on and. Cooper, man, I hope I do it justice, dude. Uh, he is going to send me some notes here. Uh, we've, we've been chatting while I was playing that song. Uh, Modern Life Architecture. So, got his notes here. So, we will definitely cover. I'll give you my thoughts, and then I'll give you Coop's. Uh, Coop did an awesome job. The man sat down, and he wrote, geez Louise, man. How many pages? Five pages. Coop's a man. All right. I don't. I do not doubt Coop and his and his mental knowledge. So, I'll give you my impression here first of modern life architecture. Uh, it it shows that again. We put so much work into something, you know, in the life that we live, whether it be job, house, wife, whatever, career, you put all this work into something and you, you, you set it up on such a high pedestal. Um, but it, it really, it, it, it's really fragile anyway. You may think it's cemented in, in the bedrock and you you put all this work into it, but you're continually trying to keep that thing from falling over. And that is kind of the impression I get from this song. We are modern life architecture. I mean, that's what the way people work. They put all this stuff together. And it's in the lyrics itself. Um, we design a plan right there at the beginning. We work, we build, we make it real. And in the moment it becomes complete, the first cracks start to appear. Um, it's just to me, it's showing you the fragility, fragile, the fragility of life and and how things are just that far away from crumbling and becoming nothing again. Um, now, we're going to hop in here and I'm going to jump into Coop's notes. Sorry chatting with Coop here, letting him know I'm still in here and I'm, I'm, I'm carrying the flag. Um, Coop has some things to say. And I'm going to just go ahead and read it here and I'll, you know, expound and expand if I can. Um, okay. He says, when we're young, we're told to make a plan, and the elders preach that we should go forth with that plan and reach it. But when we reach it, we begin to notice cracks, and oftentimes we realize that we've been living in such a fast life, striving for the goals that we set years before, that when we finally stop because we've finished, we realize that we've made mistakes. We spend the prime of our years settling in for something that will eventually crumble down and we can't get that time back. Then we return to being the person we were before, but with more missing. When we then go back to try and fix what was broken, giving it one more go with, with time being our main enemy, it's not likely to work unless you catch it early, but oftentimes that is not the case. Oftentimes those dreams are abandoned. Oftentimes with a loved one being the one we abandoned them, being the one we abandon them, we leave them with our baggage and our broken dreams. But it's hard for those dreams to fall and cracks to appear because we are led to believe that everyone has the weight of the world on their shoulders. Everybody has that weight on them. And while there is hope that we can overcome it, it's so heavy a burden to be going forth and carrying. Um, yeah, it's... Just like he says, it's 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 putting stuff together and watching stuff kind of fall apart, going back, and we waste a lot of time in our lives doing something. Sometimes it, it you know really in the long run is meaningless, and I think that is you know the prime 
driving force behind this song. Uh, and just like Coop says here with, okay, it, it's falling apart. I've got to go back and get it fixed. I've got to go back and, 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 and get back to where I was. Um, we're trying to reach that plan. Uh, and if you fall back a little bit further, okay, I got to get right back up there. And it's, it's tough not to, it's tough to realize that that goal you have honestly may not mean a whole lot. Um, keeping in with the theme of, you know, living your life right now. Uh, that to me is that to me <laughs> coops pissed sorry he just messaged me i i'm gonna run it past him just to see if he wants to if he wants to wait and finish this i have no problem with it like if we do thross and blot i know i'm probably mispronouncing that we might just tack these last three songs on to the end of that i'm gonna run it past him meanwhile i'm gonna go ahead and play a little bit of the next song which is kiss my ashes goodbye. Now, see, this is, I know Coop was just waiting to come to the end of this so we can kind of tie it all back. So folks, just bear with me, play a little bit more of this song. This is a 10 minute and 57 second song. So we're, <laughs> it's, the songs are getting longer. This is actually a two-parter, which is pretty interesting, but uh, I'll play a little bit of this, talk to Coop, and then we'll see if we're gonna end the episode or continue. I shall return. Kiss my ashes goodbye. All right. That's that's fitting because as a matter of fact, folks, uh, I'm leaving. <laughs> uh, I, I just talked to Coop there. What we're going to do is this. Uh, Coop and I are going to do Thross and Blot uh, at some point. I, I, I told him I'm down for that album, so hopefully he'll, have, he'll, he'll definitely have me on there. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the last, I think, three songs here eight, nine, 10, 11, make that four songs. And we're going to start that out on that podcast. And then we're going to have to rock it through Thross and Blot. Um, I hate the fact that Coop did not, first off, I hate the fact that he got kicked off of here. Um, because that's bullshit, man. This is his, this seriously was his album. He's been itching 
to review this album. If you've listened to any of the past Metal Hammer of Dooms, uh, he's been talking about how excited he was to get on here and express his views and how much he loved this album. Uh, and so I hate the fact of even thinking about continuing on without his input. He sent me the notes, but dang it, folks, this is Coop's magnum opus for this year, I think. So we're, we are going to cut this uh, episode of Metal Hammer of Doom short and join us. We'll just kind of keep an ear out there for when we're going to be doing Thross and Blot, and we'll pick up the last, the last four tracks on this, and we'll talk about them on there. Um, I appreciate you guys sticking through uh, you know, all the technical difficulties we've had with this show. Uh, Coop specifically said that blog talk can blow him. Um, and, you know, I, it's, it's tough. If you listen to uh, any of our podcasts, a lot of times you'll hear us griping about the, uh, the blog talk radio. But without further ado, I've got to find the intro music for this piece, which I think, did I say intro? I meant outro. Um, Metal Hammer of Doom outro. Let me see if we got that on here. Got to find the outro music. Uh, let me go ahead and plug my stuff here just real quick for anybody that's stuck around. Um, my name is Jesse Starcher. You can find me on Twitter at Stiznarkey. You can find a show that I do on the Rattalition Broadcasting Network called Source Material, where we cover the good and not so great comic book story arcs that are out there last one that we did me and the rib mvp patrick mullen uh we took it upon ourselves to talk about the death of superman and that was a fun fun podcast that was a book that um uh, that pat wanted to talk about uh so that's that was last, this past monday i'm working on a uh, I'm working on a podcast for my local Comic Con here. Just doing a bunch of recording, some interviews and stuff like that. Uh, so if you guys are interested in hearing about some local stuff, uh, you know, check me out there. Hearing about uh, not next Monday, but the following Monday on the 10th. And as for the broad, uh, the Rattle and Broadcasting Network, definitely go give that Facebook page a like interact with us you can stay up on top of all the podcasts that we have available out there such as um 411 ground and pound with robert winfrey and jeff harris where they are talking about the mma world we got my podcast source material on monday tuesdays right now i think are licked field live which they're talking uh i think they're just coming up on the finishing a discussion in regards to Orange is the New Black. Sorry, I almost forgot about it. I uh, forgot the name. Wednesdays are the Summer Blockbuster Review, and I think up they just did Pixels, which, oh my gosh, Robert Winfrey in a pissed-off mood. Hilarious. He did not like that movie, and if you guys are want to be entertained, go listen to Robert Winfrey be pissed. Because um, he's usually the straight man, and he, not, not, nothing gets him too riled up. He was riled up. Uh, anyway, Mark Radulich and Robert Winfrey covered Pixels there last week. We've got, they've got this coming Wednesday is going to be Mission Impossible, the new Mission Impossible movie. Thursdays, hey, by the way, me and Teasley are coming back with uh, the Cheap Seats from the Cheap Seats Sports Podcast. Shouldn't be this Tuesday, but or this coming Tuesday, probably the following Tuesday. Thursdays are Long Road to Ruin or Metal Hammer of Doom. Long Road to Ruin focuses on movie franchises out there. Um, Mark Radlich, Sean Comer. Uh, they did a Terminator one not too long ago. At some point, they're going to finish up the Jack Ryan series. Keep an eye on that. Uh, Metal Hammer of Doom will be back next week, I think. And they're, uh, man, I need to plug the show. I don't know what they're covering. I can't think of it. But because I just listened to a podcast that was plugging it. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's going to be NWA. <clears throat> I don't know, but watch for, watch for it. Uh, watch for it. Show up on the Rattle and Broadcasting Network. Lots of fun. Always on the Metal Hammer of Doom. I always listen to every podcast. Um, that's Mark Rattle will probably be back for that. And Robert Cooper will definitely be back for that. 
Fridays, Everyone Loves a Bad Guy with Robert Winfrey shines a light on the dark side where he focuses on villains in different genres, such as the comic book medium. He'll focus on wrestling, villains, and he does a great job. Always enjoy listening to his show. Saturdays, my boy Ronnie Adams, uh, who always, most likely you're going to hear him on source material, but Ronnie Adams and Adam Runyon are bringing you the screaming boy productions podcast where they talk movies and this past week they this past saturday was ant-man so we talked ant-man and we also got the opportunity to talk uh avengers that would never see the big screen so if you're interested in checking that out uh screaming boy productions podcast and at some point, I'm sure Coop's going to bring back uh, the Hentai Frentai Sentai Rider podcast. Uh, that's really not the name. It's Sentai Rider podcast. That's that's coming up some point. I'm sure he's going to have an episode. Whew. That's it, folks. Uh, again, thanks for sticking around, listening to uh, us have our blog talk battle tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed the album. Again, if you have the opportunity to check out Woods of e- E-Prey on either Spotify, you can find the album on YouTube. Uh, it's, it's a great album. I definitely, definitely enjoy it. And I definitely recommend it. So that being said, I'm ready to get out of here. And the only thing that's stopping me from doing that is finding this freaking outro music because it can't say metal hammer of doom outro it says intro. we got an intro, but finding an outro is the hard part. MC, MC, M Money in the Bank. Orange is the new black. I'm not playing that. Uh, man, where is this thing at? What are we going to play to go to out to? We got the TNA outro. Whiskey outro. Man, I'm giving you the lowdown on what it is. And, you know, right now would be a great time. I know the name of this song. You guys hear it all the time. Hey, I'll tell you what. Let's just let's just do this this way, okay? Uh, what's this one? What's this one sound like? That's that's an awesome song, but we're not playing that one. Let's what's this one sound like? This is Ant Man, I think. That's that would definitely be from. Come on, here we go. Conspiracy, DC outro. What is this? Right here. Nope. Uh, <laughs> just play this because I like it. <laughs> Bet that blew out your eardrums. Uh, man. Where is this? At. That's what is this? Oh, you know, you, you probably recognize that one. Gosh darn, I'm just gonna have to pick one and go with it. All right, here we go. No, I'm that I'm definitely not leaving to you two. Uh. How low can you go? All right. We'll just leave the body count because I'm 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 done messing around. Here we go. Have a good one, folks. Thanks for sticking around. Body count, body count, body count. Yeah, body motherfucker! Count. Body count, body count, body count, body count.
that's your cue to turn the episode off. Have a good evening. It's official. Kroger is on a mission to deliver fresh groceries to your neighborhood. That's right. It's now easier than ever to save time and money on your grocery essentials with our low prices. And you can even get all your fresh favorites delivered in our refrigerated trucks right to your door. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Enjoy $15 off your first three delivery orders of $35 or more. Offer valid with digital coupon while supplies last. Restrictions apply. See site for details. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to Chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.